What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. Today we have a very exciting tutorial on how you can create some awesome aerial style explosions inside of Blender utilizing the Chaos add-on with Blender 2.82 and Mantaflow. This might be one of the quickest and most efficient explosion tutorials I've made, so I hope you enjoy it. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. First, let's go ahead and delete everything in our scene here. Then we'll go ahead and go to our camera tab here and make sure that our cycles render engine is selected. Now let's go ahead and start making our explosion particle system. So we'll go to our chaos tab here. And we'll go ahead and select the dynamic smoke fire checkbox here. And we're going to be using the omnidirectional burst operator for our aerial explosion. But first let's go ahead and change some of our particle parameters. So let's go ahead and increase our particle amount by something like three. Then we'll change our initial ending velocity to something like 0.35 to give it a little bit more violent ending result. All right, so now we'll go on our timeline and choose where we want our explosion to start. So say frame 25. And then we'll make sure our 3D cursor is where we want our explosion to be. And then we'll go ahead and just press our omnidirectional burst operator here. And now as you can see, our omnidirectional burst particle system as well as our custom smoke domain cube has been added to our scene here. We'll go ahead and select both of those and we'll just bring them up on the Z axis. And we'll go ahead and scroll through our timeline and see what our particle system is doing right now. And as you can see, our particles are going outside of our smoke domain. So let's go ahead and scale our smoke domain cube up so that our explosion is inside of our smoke domain. Something like that. Now let's go ahead and adjust a few of the particle settings of our omnidirectional burst. So we'll go ahead and select it. Then we'll go to our particle tab here on the right. And we'll keep the number of particles at 450, but we'll also increase the lifetime randomness to one. And then we'll change our end frame here to one less than it is right now. So say frame 29. And now if we play through our animation, we get something like that. And I'll actually do one thing. I'll go ahead and change this end frame to something like 28. Let's see what that does for us to make give us a little bit more sudden blast. That's looking pretty cool. You can also change the shape and scale of your operator. So if we want to quickly change how the particles are acting in our scene. All right, so this is looking pretty cool for now. Let's go ahead and prepare to bake our simulation. First, go ahead and add a light to light up our smoke. So we'll add a sun lamp. We'll just put it off to the side here. And then we'll go ahead and duplicate that same sun lamp and just put it here off to the left so we have two sources. Now we'll go ahead and select our smoke domain here. We'll go to the physics properties tab. And this is where we can change the environment in which our smoke interacts in. So the main thing we're going to change here is our resolution divisions. We'll increase this to something like 256. And essentially the higher this resolution divisions number is, the larger in scale your smoke simulation is going to look. Now let's go ahead and go down to our fire settings here. Under the reaction speed, we'll change it to 0.05. And what this is going to do is it's going to decrease the speed in which our fuel burns. So essentially by doing this, we get a slower burning gasoline style effect. So we could leave it where it was, but our gasoline would burn off very quickly. So since we want to allow those flames to burn off more slowly, we'll go for something like 0.05. All right, so now before we bake our simulation, let's go ahead and save our file. We'll go ahead and create a new folder. We'll call it a real explosion tutorial we'll go ahead and save it and now we're going to go to our cache tab here under our smoke domain and we'll make a new folder for our smoke cache or essentially where our smoke data is being baked so we'll go to uh, our same aerial explosion folder and we'll call it aerial cache and now all of our smoke data will be baked into this folder all right, so now we'll go ahead and change the end frame of our bake settings to something like 130. So now we'll get around four seconds of simulation and we'll go ahead and also change the end frame of our animation to 130 as well. And now we'll go ahead and once more save our project. And now what we're going to do is we're going to press bake data and give some time for your computer to simulate your explosion. All right, so we are back and this is our initial particle simulation and it's looking pretty nice here. 
One of the best ways to preview your simulation in real time is using the OpenGL Render Active Viewport option here. So to view your animation in preview mode in real time, what you want to do is go to View and Viewport Render Animation. And then when you do that, Blender is going to take your viewpoint of whatever you're looking at and go through and analyze all those frames so that when you go to Render and View Animation, it will pop up and you can see it in real time and this is looking like a pretty cool explosive result here there are a lot of things we could change we could add more particles mess around with the resolution division size but this is looking pretty nice and i think it will give a pretty cool result so let's go ahead and close it here and then bake it with higher resolution to get some of those finer details in our smoke and fire so let's go ahead and select our domain cube here and then we'll go to our physics tab as well and then what we want to do is to refine and add more detail to our smoke and fire mesh that we just baked. We want to go to this noise tab here and we want to go ahead and select it. Now we have a few options in this tab here. We have the primary up-res factor, which in other words, how much we want to increase the detail of our smoke. And then we have the strength of the noise, the scale of the noise, and then the time of the noise, or essentially how the animation of the noise goes over time. So we're gonna leave all of these at the default except for the up res factor. We wanna go for a pretty uh, detailed simulation, so we'll put it at three. Two might be pretty nice, but I think three will give it a little bit better for a little bit closer look. Essentially, the closer you're going to composite your explosion to the camera, the more detail you're going to want to add with this up res factor here. And now let's go ahead and save our blend file one more time. And then we'll go ahead and press bake noise and once again give your computer some time to simulate. All right guys, so we are back and we have baked the noise onto our original base mesh and it's looking pretty awesome here. We have some pretty nice high resolution detail on our smoke and flames. So now let's go ahead and add a camera to our scene and tweak our material settings and then prepare our explosion for exporting as an open EXR sequence with an alpha channel. So you can put that on top of your animation or live action footage. All right, so first let's go ahead and press Shift A and we'll just add a camera here. We'll just pull this camera back somewhere around here and we'll just view through our camera here, something like that. And we'll just find a nice frame of our explosion here. All right, something like this is looking pretty nice. We might want to uh, increase the size of our frame here if we want to get the edges of the smoke a little bit better, but I think this will look pretty nice for now. But that also depends on where you're going to composite your explosion. Maybe I'll just pull this back a little tiny bit. And depending on how much high resolution noise you added to your explosion, you might not be able to get too close to your explosion unless you increase that even more. But this is looking pretty nice. So now let's go ahead and go to our shading tab here and we'll start working on the way our smoke looks. And as you can see right now, we are using the EV rendering engine. So let's go ahead and switch to cycles here at the top. And we'll also go to view and view through our camera to see what we're looking at. And now let's go ahead and select our smoke domain here. And as you can see, it's looking uh, not too good right now, but don't worry, we're going to tweak some of our smoke domain settings and give it a much better look. All right, so we'll go here to our smoke domain settings, and there are a variety of settings you should tweak here. First, you have on the top here the color of your smoke, so we might just increase that and make it a little bit lighter. Then here under the density attribute, we have the amount of density in our smoke. So essentially, the higher this value is, the more dense our smoke will be. So we'll go ahead and decrease this to something like maybe 280. As you can see, our flames are coming through our smoke even more now. We might also increase the contrast of our smoke a little bit, and the contrast option just kind of increases the variation between the most dense parts of your smoke and the least dense part of your smoke. So when we increase this, you get a little bit thicker look, but also it creates a little bit more larger scale look in my opinion. So I might just add one for the contrast. It also kind of carves up the flames a little bit. All right, so our smoke is looking okay, but our flames are looking a little off right now. So we'll go here to our flame values here on the bottom here. And this is where we can change how bright the flames are. So we'll go ahead and decrease this to something like 120. And now as you can see, we get a much more realistic looking fire explosion look. And you can also increase the contrast of these flames to uh, increase the difference of the brightest and the darkest parts of your flames. But this is looking pretty nice. You can also adjust the color ramp here. Essentially this point right here will change how much your smoke is coming through your fire so essentially if we move this to the right 
we start hiding the fire more within our smoke. As you can see here, our fire is being hidden from our smoke a little bit more, but we'll just go ahead and leave that out where it was at default as it's giving a pretty nice result. All right, finally in this middle color ramp here, this is where we can change the color of our flames. We can even add more points along this color ramp if you want to add, for example, some red flames in here, you would just add a point that's red and adjust it to where you would like. For this specific example, we'll go for this fiery uh, orange explosion look. I might just bring this over a little bit to push it a little bit more orange instead of being so white along the color ramp, but this is looking pretty nice. I might actually increase the brightness of our flames a little bit to something like 180. And then I'll also actually decrease the contrast and now actually it's giving a little bit nicer result. And a lot of these settings are things you should play with in order to get different styles of explosions and different densities and different looks. Um, but this is looking pretty nice. I might increase the density value a little bit to something like 320. And I might bring that contrast actually back in to kind of give that thicker smoke look. And this is on frame uh, 50 of the explosion, so keep in mind that we should look at our explosion domain material at different points of the blast as well. So for example, we might want to uh, go back to layout mode here and just go to uh, frame 40, for example. And now as you can see, this is our initial blast, so now we can go back to our shading area and see how, our, see how our explosion is looking at this point. And this is right at the point of the initial blast, so this is kind of the point where you would add the most glow and glare to uh, enhance the explosion quite a bit. But it's looking pretty nice. Once we add some glow and glare, I think this will look pretty good. Here we are at frame uh, 46 of the explosion, and it's looking pretty nice here. So let's go ahead and uh, do a test render at, say, frame 50, and see how our explosion is looking more precisely. So we'll go back to our layout mode here. And we'll just go to frame 55, for example, kind of where the uh, flames are burning out a little bit and the smoke is starting to dissipate. And before we do a test render, we'll go ahead and change a few render settings to get an optimal result. So we'll go to the camera tab here. We'll change the render samples to something like 40. Rendering smoke can take a while, so I try to push this as low as possible while still getting a pretty good result. You can actually bring this down even more if you'd like. And I always check my seed stopwatch here for some noise variation. Then I'll also go to light paths here. And then we'll increase the volume bounces to at least four so that our light bounces around our smoke a little bit. Then under the volumes tab here, we'll change the step size to 0.05. And we'll change our max steps to something like 260. All right, finally, we'll go to the film tab here and we'll make this a transparent background and that's what's going to allow us to composite onto live action footage. Let's go ahead and check our output settings here. We can do our test render at something like 85% and then go ahead and press render and render image and then give your computer some time to render that image of your simulation. All right, so I paused the render a little bit early since it was taking a little bit longer than I expected, but this test render gives us a good idea of what the explosion is going to look like, and it's looking pretty good. Depending on where you want to put your explosion, you may want to adjust the lighting to create a different look and match it to your environment, but this is looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and prepare our explosion for export. All right, so we'll go to our camera view here. And then I recommend just going through your simulation and making sure that your explosion stays within your camera. So as you can see, we have a pretty nice full shot of our explosion here. So now we're just going to go to our output tab here and we'll choose the output of our explosion. We'll go ahead and change the file format to the OpenEXR file sequence. And then we'll choose on our output tab here where we want to save our animation files. We'll find our aerial explosion folder. Go ahead and accept it. Then we'll boost the resolution to 100%. And then make sure that your animation timeline includes the frames you want rendered, and then go ahead and press render and render animation, and then give your computer some time to render out all of your frames. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. We hope you like these videos. We hope you like the chaos add-on. Be sure to check out our previous video on how to create a mini nuke style explosion inside of Blender 2.82 utilizing Mantaflow as well. And I'll see you guys next time.